giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First Updates Now is able to create content thanks to viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. What? Welcome, welcome to the Judging uh, Ask Me Anything panel. Today we have an exciting group of people who are going to share their wisdoms with us. Uh, if you guys would like to introduce yourselves uh, briefly, first, I'm Asha. I'm your moderator tonight. And uh, go ahead. Let's we'll start with the top left corner. Hi, I'm Srini Sation. Uh, I've been involved in First Lego League since Body Forward as a judge or a coach. Hi, I'm Ray Vinson. I have been involved with First Lego League for going into my 13th year. And I'm the judge advisor for the West Florida region. Hi, I'm Brenda Ronnebaum. I've been involved with First Lego League since Food Factor. And um, I am the Ohio partner for First Lego League Challenge. Hi, my name is Stacy Jones. I'm the program delivery partner for South Florida. And I've been involved in First Lego League since 2003, Mission Mars. Uh, I'm Joe Gillen. I've been involved with also since uh, Food Factor in 2011. Hello, my name is Jay Kinsey. I've been involved since Volcanic Panic back in the year 2000, and uh, I'm currently a head robotic design judge for Illinois. Great. Well, welcome, everybody. Um, I know that everybody's super excited because today we saw the launch of uh, the replay season. And of course, the first thing on everybody's mind is what is what are all the changes that we're gonna see with judging. So today we learned that some of the judging process are going to change. So I would love to start the discussion with, um, can someone explain to me what the changes are and what can teams expect in terms of um, what judging is gonna look like this season? Okay, I guess I'll start. <laughs> um, the changes this year is going to be core values and all of our amazing rubrics. So um, really excited. Uh, we have new rubrics, so that hasn't happened in a while. Um, another thing that's going to change is we have consolidated judging. So uh, we have uh, the teams coming in, hopefully, and uh, three judges that will be judging um, all at one time. So uh, about 30 minutes. So we're really excited about that. So what what can a team expect when they first enter the room? Like what what is that breakdown and how long is this one consolidated judging? Um, right. So if you look at be? the judging session flow chart, that's mm -hmm. pretty much uh, for teams. That's what it's going to look like. So um, team welcome for about two minutes. And of course, we're going to stick to this time schedule. <laughs> um, um, and then we have innovative projects for six for uh, five minutes. And then um, we have some Q&A and then robot design for five minutes and then Q&A. And then we have core value reflection for about three minutes. And then the best part, you get feedback. So teams will actually get feedback from the judges, which we all think is awesome because we always want to tell the teams how they can be better and what we really liked and um, you know how they can always get a do a little bit better next time. So this is a different process for some regions. I know that some regions did pilot it, so some teams are used to it. Uh, and I think that some coaches end up being apprehensive about a big change like this. Is it really a big change, and should they be apprehensive? Uh, I, I would say yes and no. Uh, I, I helped pilot this last year. Uh, once you get over the initial hunt, when, once you are familiar with the process, I think it goes pretty smoothly. Uh, I tell everybody, I think they, the coaches have much more difficult time than the kids do. Uh, kids will adjust fine. Um, it, it's Again, it is a major change, but it, it's still the core of what you're doing is still the same. You're still delivering the same message pretty much in the same amount of time. Uh, I think the teams that excel will be the teams that go in knowing that knowing the process knowing the flow knowing how to transition from one to another how to um be able to adjust i mean i guess be prepared with with a, with a standard way of doing things but also be flexible to 
be able to get back on track if things go off track because things will timings will be off a little bit um but but that's that's fine um but the, at, at the teams that i saw really liked it i thought uh, and again with the feedback i thought the feedback was great because that's that's really uh, to me the last five minutes of the session is really when you see the teams at their best see that's when you see the teams because they're sort of relaxed after they've gone through their scripted parts and then uh, once once you get to the q a and you're actually having an actual conversation i think that's the most fun and beneficial part as a judge and as a team because you both learn so much from each other at that point Great. Like Can to... I add on? Oh, sure. One quick thing. Uh, Sorry, for those that. of you watching the stream, uh, please post your questions in the live chat and our and our panelists will answer. Yeah. Go ahead, Just Brenda. real quickly, um, as the partner for Ohio, which is the, the region where Joe coached, I, I can also say that most of the feedback I heard from coaches echoes exactly what he's saying. At the beginning of the season, most were apprehensive and really nervous about how it would go. And I would say the same for our judges as well. And we have a three-tiered system in Ohio, so we did this, you know, at three different levels. And then throughout the season, at the end of the season, almost everyone was saying, I was so nervous, but it turned out to be really great, and I loved it. So um, do know that, and, and you probably are feeling nervous about the changes, but um, I think it's going to work out really well. And Jay? Yeah, I, I, I would also like to echo both of you as well. Um, in addition, because the teams are only introducing themselves to one set of judges, they actually have more time to deliver their content to the judges. It also gives judges a longer period of time to get a better sense of the whole team. So the, the judging itself is more efficient and it also is better for the teams as well. Mm -hmm. um, having judged before, I honestly, it would be my preferred method always. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mine too. And okay. Asha, can I clarify, uh, Robo Girls asked, yeah. yes, there, there, are th there is one 30 minute session and you will go in and you do IP and uh, the project and then you stop that and then you go to robot design and you stop that and then you do core values all in the same room, same three judges all at one time. So it's, it's actually, I love it. I think it's uh, in South Florida, we did it last year and I am a believer. So it's fantastic. Yep. So I guess uh, another viewer wants to know how can they do judging virtually then in this with this walk into one room? Is there and any we indication? actually did that with virtual open invitational and back in April and it was amazing. It was really well done. I am um, I got to see a lot of everything. So it's really it's it's a nice um, nice area where even virtually it all works. Okay. I do there think are, it's possible. Uh, with remote events that we will see regions operate in this system a little bit differently this year. So um, th this will be an area, make sure you're paying attention. Uh, all of the partners are planning a as soon as your partner's releasing, this is exactly how it's going to go in our region. Um, that's what you need to pay, pay the most attention to. Wonderful. So as Stacy mentioned, uh, there are rubrics changes along with this new format change for some regions, a new format change. Uh, maybe we could uh, take some time to look at the new rubrics and comment on what we notice is different, uh, highlight some key areas that uh, we might want to remind teams to look at carefully and help them uh, come up with uh, or change their strategy if needed. So. Um, we can see on the screen that uh, there is a core value rubric. So this looks a little different than last year's core value rubric. Um, does anyone have any feedback on how a team can uh, uh, use this rubric to be successful this season? Well, I think it's going to be important for teams, um, new teams. These are, these are the rubrics you're going to know. Um, but for returning teams, you know, this is, it's quite different than, than what we've had in the past. So I would recommend as a team um, early on looking at these rubrics and making sure that the goals that you're setting for your team uh, for what you're going to accomplish is, a, is in line with the rubrics because there are some differences. Um, the, mm -hmm. it, the rubrics are centered on the engineering design process and, and have different wording than we're used to. If you look at the innovation project rubric, it's asking you to have a prototype mm -hmm. um, or, a, or a drawing uh, for your innovative solution. And that's different. That wasn't on the rubrics before. So 
early on in your season, I would recommend spending some time with these rubrics and making sure that the team understands how they're different and perhaps reaching out on FLL Share and Learn or reaching out to your regional partner for, for guidance if you have questions. Yeah, just and to I'll, reiterate. Go ahead, Sherry. Okay. Just to reiterate what Brenda said, these are what you're going to be evaluated based on. There are some nice tools to sort of, you know, if you want to fill in your own rubrics on flotutorials.com uh, as well. Um, I would say they are certainly very different than last year, looking at the robot design rubric, um, which is, I believe, a little bit further down um, than the innovation project. Um, you'll notice that there's a, a stronger expectation for expecting all team members to participate in the process. Um, there's also a lot more integration of the evaluation of the, the design process and the hardware and the, the programming that are much more across all the all the categories rather than having separated categories for each of them. And one of the things in the core values, you might notice that's totally different. There is not an activity. Um, so we have when when teams come in, you have the team welcome. That's a really good time to shine and and show how you do core values in um, for your team. And overall, um, this is where you're going to get exceeds if you're actually you know doing core values out in your community. So um, those kind of things like that, it's it's you know. You don't have your your activity, but you do have to still show and demonstrate how you do core values with your team. And it can't all right. be just fun. Yes. And the expectation is going to be that core values is being judged throughout the entire session as well. So when your team is talking about your robot design process and when your team is talking about how you accomplish the innovation project, you know, they're looking for inclusion. They're looking for um all, all the core values um, and how you did that within your season, which is another part of the integration of the of the session. Yep. There's a related question about um, I, somebody noticed that there's nothing written in the exceeds column. Why is that? And then how will a judge fill that in? Uh, so I, I'd like to take this one. Um, that exceeds column is, is empty so that the judges can write a specific comment that would that is the justification for elevating a team to that performance level uh, the other thing i would like to mention uh, sort of related to the last question is regardless of how we change our, our our tools and judging you know we're still looking for high performance robots high performance projects high performance core values right so just because we change these tools doesn't really change necessarily the type of work we would look for output look for as output so one thing to add about the exceeds is that there is no one way for a team to shine. And I think the rubrics really reflect that, this notion of allowing, you know, whether you know, in robot design, there are very different ways to build something that is unusual, surprising, you know, high performing. You know, it's not that everything has to be exactly the same. And, you know, there might be some clear things of, oh, okay, you, you kind of mastered the beginning steps of, you know, a project or, or, or a robot design, but, once you're at that upper echelon and you're getting those exceeds, you know, team A and team B may be getting it for very different reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's a good point. Um, uh, a question uh, that one of the teams has for the judging panel, they want to know if they took last year's innovation project and expanded it, changed it up, uh, how would that be viewed by judges? There are actually no guidelines that say that you cannot repeat a project topic. Um, as a partner, I would implore you to do what you're saying and, and expand upon it and change it and um, you know make it this season, but, but it's possible and it's happened before. You know, when we had teams contact us for City Shaper because oh my gosh, their hydrodynamics project was perfect and they'd love to revisit and they have all these ideas for how they can change it. And, and I thought it was wonderful, um, but it, you wouldn't be doing your team much of a service if you just completely recycled the project, right? So um, use, a, use a new project or make your existing project better, right? Um, I, yeah, and I would agree wholeheartedly on that. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, expand, you know, read the rules for the game changer, make sure that 
you know, you're modifying that to meet what's required for game changers this year. Great. Uh, question related to core values judging. Uh, is, is a core value poster kind of part of the requirement anymore? It, the question is actually about the pilot, but I think this is irrelevant of the pilot. Is a core value poster part of the game changer season? Or do we not know? It, I like a good poster. <laughs> yeah, um, I can say that during the pilot, um, uh, th during the official pilot, we were not um, allowed to require a core values poster and we didn't require one. Um, in fact, I was discouraged from recommending uh, a core values poster. But when teams contacted me and asked about it, you know, I would say bringing in a visual aid into your judging session is a good idea. You know, giving the judges something to look at is a good idea, but make sure you're highlighting what you want them to see. Like you have an opportunity here to, if, if you choose to make a visual aid, to, to show off, right? Show them where you excel. So I do think visual aids are a good idea. Um, I'm not expecting core values posters to be a requirement in a region though, I would be surprised. Yeah, I, I would just reiterate that also. I mean, just basically you're repeating exactly what Brenda said. Even if they're not required, I would always, always, always recommend them. I always call it, you know, the giant index card so kids can reference something, especially in a 30 minute session. If, they, if at the end, if they want to holly something, they can check it just to make sure it's there. Um, it, it's for their benefit, for the judge's benefit. I, there's, I, I, I think it's always a good idea to have one. Great. But All also right. tie it back to the rubric, too. I mean, it says right. on there, yes. team clearly shows that they have worked as a team throughout their journey. So rather just than just having discovery and fun, they could actually show their journey of what they did for mm -hmm. core values. Um, so make it meaningful. Don't just make it something that, you know, reiterates what FIRST is about, which is great, but we, we want more. Yeah, and, and of course, it's never a substitute for what the kids say, what they present. They can't just, if it's on right. the board, they assume that yes. it, it, it satisfied the rubric. So they actually have to say and talk about what's on the board. Correct. Great. FLL uh, 71 has a great question. Are they going to be guaranteeing three judges per panel? Because in their area, they traditionally see only two judges in a room, and they're worried about getting inexperienced judges who may not be uh, informed of all the categories. I, I'd like to take this one. Um, in Illinois, it, we're, we take it on a judge by judge basis. So there's lots of judges that have judged all three categories or two of those categories. And we actively pair the correct set of judges together for any given room. If a room does require a third judge, then we will then add that third judge to that room. Wonderful. I, I believe the recommendation is, is going to be two to three. Um, uh, is the recommendation for a judging setup. Okay. Robo so girl, it, sorry, go ahead, Serena. I was just going to add on to Jay. I think uh, this new format actually makes it easier to get experienced judges and inexperienced mm -hmm. judges to be kind of together and give the inexperienced judges an opportunity to sort of train and become more familiar with the, with the types of questions. So I think what you'll end, end up seeing is probably overall a, a better judging experience from the perspective of uh, getting people who will ask you kind of the right types of questions and, and understand what FLL is really all about. Great. The RoboGirls would like some clarification on core values judging. They want to know, is core values judged only through the IP and robot presentation? Uh, is there no team challenge? Yeah, Correct. If you look at, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. If you look at the judging session flowchart, there's not built-in time there for an activity. So it'll be judged throughout, but there are two pockets of time where um, the team can actually talk specifically about core values, which is during that welcome um, section and then also in the core values reflection piece. So there will be time to be conversational about core values specifically. Yeah, and when I judged teams last year in the, in the pilot, uh, the, the first two minutes, the introduction was probably the most wasted time, the most wasted opportunities that a lot of teams missed. That was a, a golden time to start presenting some core values examples and, and uh, your personality in that welcome. So do not miss that. It's not just simply, hey, we're team X from this place. Use it. You've got two minutes, so use it. Uh, Vic, Vicki Allen has a follow up on that. Is it is a three minutes core value portion of the uh, judging session just Q&A I, I, or something else?
Um, I well, would expect that. Yeah. Go ahead, Stacy. Sorry. So I'm reading. Uh, I'm reading yeah. it because <laughs> this is new to us also. Mm -hmm. um, but it does say it's a time to elicit information that we can complete the rubric. So we, it's going to be Q&A, it's going to be prompts, it's going to be tell us some more about your community outreach. Tell us some more about how you use discovery in your, um, you know, in your team. Um, tell us about your journey. So that's going to, it's going to fill in that, those rubrics. So have something prepared. I mean, you know, we don't want to just sit there and, and feed you. We want you to, to tell the judges all the wonderful things you're doing for your, um, for your core values that demonstrate core values. Great. Thank you so much. And I'd like to open it up now to some general questions that will help uh, teams in general. Well, first, Lego League judging. Uh, when you, would you recommend to a team that everybody should have a part to play in their judging presentations? Absolutely. Absolutely. Every time, yep. <laughs> So for example, um, in the robot design rubric, it very explicitly has uh, as part of it um, a, an evaluation of what percentage of the team understands the building and coding skills necessary to accomplish the, the robot game. Um, and in order to score, for example, accomplished, all team members learn building and coding skills. And for a robot design judge like myself, it would be very hard for me to evaluate that if the, the, the different uh, students don't participate or well, team members don't participate. Right. Sticking with robot design then, what are our robot design judges' recommendations for a team for how to present their robot or their programming? What What is the best practices for them to communicate with their judges in their room? I'll let you take that, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Thank you So. Um, one, one of the things I would say about judging in general, and a, and a lot of teams don't necessarily get this around the first time, is the judges are really here to help you. Mm -hmm. The judges are not here to try to pull you down or try to pick apart what you're doing. We want you to present your best foot forward every time, right? So when you come talk mm -hmm. to us, come talk to us as friends. So I would start from that kind of an angle. Mm -hmm. And then also being relaxed, talk at a moderate pace. Um, try to only have one person talk at a given time. You know, the, the judges, you know, we can only hear so many things at one time. So sort of those base effective communication skills. And those communication skills are also going to be echoed in the uh, core values and in the presentation. So a good presentation is a good presentation. And that's going to help you more effectively communicate what you need to communicate. In addition, I would make sure that you bring all of your materials. Make sure you bring your robot. Make sure you bring your code. <laughs> please bring a copy of your code. Yeah. Um, the, without, without those key materials, it's almost impossible to judge uh, robot design. You'd be surprised how often those things don't come into the, come into the classroom. Some teams, they don't print their, uh, their code. Sometimes they bring it on their computer. Make sure you turn on your computer before you get in the room. <laughs> Make sure you turn on your robot before you get in the room. Right. Make sure you have all the different pieces, parts, attachments, elements that you need to present all the work that you did. Right. We, we want you to, to show us all the cool things you did. Please don't leave anything out. Yeah, just to add on to that, so um, especially for things like code, you know, um, bring the, the parts that you think are the most interesting, right? And often, you know, try to explain what, what you did that was exciting through the year to you. You know, the robot design judging is really about process and evolution. To so tell us what you tried, what worked, what didn't work, um, you know, show us what the end result was, but also show us what happened in between. Um, for the programming, I, I really like it to be able to have students, you know, explain different parts of it um, and, and be able to walk me through the code in many ways. And so that's an important, you know, you know part of the part of the judging. One other thing that, you know, going back to the very beginning of the Q&A, in terms of the, the format of the judging, one important thing is also the feedback part of the part of the session. Um, and this is an opportunity for you to, you know, actually get very explicit feedback from the judges. So, for example, for robot design, if there are things that you want to know, oh, what do you think I should have done better? Or what do you want me to, you think I can build, you know, differently or, or program differently? Or what things should I learn about? This is your opportunity to sort of, you know, ask the judges, you know, a little bit about where you're, you think 
things can be improved. So it's a, it's a great aspect of the, the uh, combined judging is that that part is actually interactive. And, I, and having been part of the trial last year, I actually found this the most unusual difference from previous years judging. Great. Well, thank you. Let's uh, transition to a, a core value questions. Robo Baggins uh, wants to ask again, is there a team challenge? And I think we answered that. No, there is no live team challenge. Um, but then let me transition to ask you core value judges on the panel. What is the best way for the kids to present core values to you? How can they tell their story? Well, it's somebody touched on earlier, and I don't remember who it was, but basically you're, you don't want to go in and just recite the core values that you understand, you understand the definitions or whatever. You want us to understand, you want to show how you demonstrated those core values, how you've internalized those core values, uh, and that will be, a lot of that is, is you know, sort of secondary through your body language and how you treat each other and how you act. So a lot of that will be subtle. So the core values can't be faked, uh, and that's it's a lot of it's going to be, practicing as a team, uh, working as a team, and obviously it's going to be a much bigger challenge this year with, with work, working remotely. Uh, but it, it, that's that's the main thing, is, is demonstrating, not just going in and, and showing, okay, I know what cooperation is. This is the definition. You know, that's, you know, show exactly, give examples of how, how you use that in your life, how you use that in your team. Well, and also to reiterate, I mean, I've always heard probably thousands of times now uh, we show our core values by the teamwork because we're on a soccer team yeah. that's awesome yeah. fantastic um let give me more i want to know i want to know your journey i want to know how your team came together and how you are now a team that's what i want to know i want to know you know the ins and outs and why you are a team um you know it's a little you know it's a little more touchy feely reflection you know core values but it's what we want to hear. We want to hear, we want you to go deeper. So if it shows on your poster, your journey, it shows on, you know, what you're doing for your community, um, how you have explored what's happening in the world today and how that's working or against you or with you or how, how is it affecting you? That's your core values. That's what it's about. And I would add on to that, um, the teams that I've seen be really successful are teams that have really internalized the core values. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not teams that just can recite it, it's teams that in what they say, they're actively living those core values. Yeah, yes. there's a question from First Nevada about the awards that are listed at the top of the new core value rubric. There's a breakthrough award, a rising all-star uh, award and a motivate award. Uh, First Nevada is wondering if you could share your thoughts on those awards on the rubric. Um, I can I can touch on those. We actually used those awards in Ohio last year. Although I do believe I'm scrolling up so I can see the, I do believe that they've refined the definitions for those a bit. Um, motivate. Um, first of all, if you are involved with FTC, that's an FTC tie-in for that award. Um, and it really is about enthusiasm and team spirit. So judges will will recommend to the judge advisor teams that they believe demonstrated um, extraordinary enthusiasm and team spirit, and they'll be considered for that award against all the other teams who were also recommended. Um, Rising All-Star this past year, it was a rookie All-Star, but what we found is um, it was very difficult to track which first Lego League teams actually qualified as rookies and then trying to refine that definition was pretty difficult. So I'm excited to see that they are not only limiting that to um, brand new teams. So, yeah. um, cause we saw plenty of teams that had only been a team for one season who had been great candidates. So um, that's, that's a, a team that we see really good things happening from. They were probably talked about and judging. We're excited about them. Um, and, and that's going to be a recommended award. And then breakthrough is about that journey that Stacy was talking about. We want to see your journey and what discovery did your team have? Um, and, and, and I love the tie in to the old core value that I really miss. Um, what we discover is more important than, than what we win. So make sure you tell the judges. I mean, tell the judges about mistakes. Tell them about lessons learned the hard way. Um, tell them about those kind of things because that, you know, that's what made you a team, you know, and, and that's where these awards are coming in. I, I did see another question in the chat about the number of teams. Um, 
in the pilot, and I believe this is the recommendation, would be that judges would then see six teams. And what we found from our judges is they really felt like they got to know those six teams instead of having very little time with 12 or more teams. They really, really got to know six teams, which made for a better experience for everybody. Yeah, definitely did. Yes. Uh, I think there's a, some questions coming up about if this whole event ends up being remote, what would judging look like? V. Gaurav wants to know that in the past they were able to give documents to their uh, judges to review. Would they still be able to do that virtually? So uh, what I know everything is not set for how a virtual event is going to happen. Uh, but do you guys have any thoughts, even in person, whether or not um, having handouts and documents that they give to judges is a useful thing or not? Well, in South Florida, uh, we are requiring if teams do, and I, I love to see information and I love to see documentation. That makes it, uh, goes a step farther. So, you know, we're requiring, I think we about eight pieces of uh, documentation is our limit. And we're going to have it come into the judges beforehand because we are doing all remote judging in South okay. Florida. So um, the judges will get to see it um, two weeks before, uh, before the event. And then we'll have um, remote judging going on the week before the actual robot games. So that's South Florida. But I love documentation. I, I want to see it. I want to see lots of it. In Illinois, it's uh, very similar as well. We, we love documentation, even though we can't necessarily collect it. Um, please put whatever you can in your video that shows your progression of work throughout the season. Right. So one and, thing and I would, go ahead, go ahead, Brenda. So well, notice how everyone is starting by saying in and then their region, because right. this is one that will be quite different. I mean, um, in Ohio, um, we won't let you leave anything with the judges. So right. you, you've got to use it during your session. Yep. If you're bringing in a binder, if you're bringing in materials, you need to use it, refer to it, show it to the judges, which I would expect you to do in a, in a video or a remote session as well. Um, you, you've got to show it to us. Um, so... I, I, for the team that asked that question, I think that's going to be up to your regional partner. Yeah, just to you know, add on to what Brenda said. Um, one thing you got to remember is, you know, looking at the judging flowchart. This is really what you're. If, if you have something you want the judges to know about or to really understand, you need to make sure that you present it within the time that you're in the room. The the stuff that you hand them, that's all icing on the cake. You know. They may like the icing. They may not even look at the icing. You know, you, you know, just from an advice from a judging perspective, uh, they may not look at. You may hand them tw twenty-five novels, and to be honest, you know, <laughs> you have Seems to think bad. about what the judge schedule is as well. <laughs> we we basically have the thirty-minute sessions. You have, you know, five minutes or something in between to sort of quickly figure out what's going on, and then another team shows up. It's, they're not necessarily going to be able to read your wonderful novel um, in between all of this in order to evaluate you. It's nice to see that you did it and it's nice to maybe to point it out. Don't rely on it. Can I jump uh, on the questions that were just yeah. popping up? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say them out loud. Yeah. Go ahead, Brenda. Callbacks are also region specific. Yep. So it would be very difficult for us any of us to answer that unless we were just talking to our own region. So that's something um, to ask in your local region, whether there'll be some version of, of callbacks. Um, and there was a second question and I've already, oh, will this be a one day event? That is gonna vary by region as well. I know uh, I've been working with Team Illinois and I think we got something good going and it will definitely be longer than one day. <laughs> um, so that's gonna vary by region. All right. In our final couple of minutes, I have uh, an open-ended question. If you could give FLL teams one piece of advice, your most important piece of advice as a judge, what would that be? I, I'll say um, don't try to put on a show for the judges and, and try to... Uh, act like you did things that you don't do because it really shows um, it'll it'll go much better if you could just just relax and Jay was giving this advice earlier relax 
be yourselves, know that the judges really do want to help you, right? And um, that, that's why they're there. And they're excited to see what you have. Be yourselves. I would say relax, don't stress. I know it's gonna seem very high stress to the kids, but enjoy it. Just enjoy the day. If you win a trophy, an award at the end of the day, great. If you don't, enjoy the experience that you have at a tournament. I would, I would say the number one piece of advice I would give is to realize that the limits that you think you have are only in your head. So once you set your target to be as, as high as possible, whether that, whether whatever that is for a particular season, that is going to open up to you a, a, path, a successful path that you can follow to reach the goals that you want to reach. So maybe you think you can only get 300 points, but what if you entertained of getting all the points? You know, and you started from there. What what if we said, what if we what do we need to do to get maximum points in research and maximum point, points in core values and then work towards that? You're the only person who puts limits on yourself. So unlock I, them. I'll build on what Jay says. Leave it all in the room. When you go in there, just do as best you can, do everything you can, and then just leave it there. And then when you walk out, I, I expect you all to be high fiving each other saying, We got it. It was wonderful. We had the best time ever. And um, and then move on because, you know, this is just one time in your life. Play the game. And keep going. It's it's amazing. It's an amazing opportunity for you guys. So we're really excited to judge you. So do your best. So in addition to the comments that others have made about, you know, be yourself, you know, I think people should remember that you don't have to do it all in one year. This is meant to be something that, um, you know, you you may look around and say, oh, my gosh, and be, you know, look at, you know, some team across from you and say, you know, how do they do so much? You, you should realize probably that team has been around for four years and, you know, yeah. maybe a lot more experience. <laughs> You're growing into it. They didn't do that in, their in first way. year. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, be proud yeah. of what you've accomplished. And, you know, sh you know, and that's what we, we want to see in a way is what have you, you done? What have you learned? What have you done? And and what do you hope to do in the future even? And that's what we want to you know, guide you on. And one more thing I thought about I would add is set goals for yourself as a team. So when you have your first meeting at the beginning of the year, you read through, you learn about the game, you learn about project and you start to you know, hone in on your project and stuff. Also think about what goals do you want to accomplish during the season? And just because you set goals at the beginning of the year, maybe you meet them halfway or you did fantastic and you want to extend those. You can always change your goals as the years go on, but as, set goals for yourself as a team. That's that's really important, I found. Great. Well, thank you very much, everybody. That was wonderful. We are um, out of time for this panel. So we... Let's wave by and wish all our teams good Bye. luck for the replay Goodbye. season. Good luck. Good luck, everyone. All right. See you soon. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and Tier 2 Plus subscribers on Twitch, keeping fun loud, live, and independent.